rock and roll for you folks tonight because we have a lot of information. Um, you heard me last week we did our first list on the top five best breeds. And I opened that by saying that from what I've seen on YouTube, most of these top ten lists are just, you know, people that are getting looks. Mm -hmm. You know, they just go to a dog encyclopedia and they get this recording. They, Corgi was, and it was such a, and they just read it. I mean, it's a recording. It's not even, it's, these are just professional people. That right. Monetize voices. And monetize, that's what, yeah, 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 yeah. So we do everything a lot different and give you a good example. Remember what I said, we have, Scott researches every topic we do. And then I'll speak from whatever experience I've had with those dogs and that thing. To give you an idea, this is his research for tonight. That's what this fan does <laughs> for every one of our podcasts. So we're going to give you the book learning part. And then I'm going to throw in wherever I've learned from actual experience. Uh, these are the top 10 breeds. We're going to try to get through them all. But for not first time owners, and I'm bringing this up because one of my customers had a problem with one of these breeds. And so I'll tell you, friends, if they're looking for a dog, they might want to check this video out. Please pass this around. Let us know that someone keeps your mind. We're supposed to ask everybody, please like, subscribe, and what else do you do? Like and subscribe? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. There you go. Thank you. So, Mr. Sinclair, what did we get for our first dog, first new owner? Let me be clear before we say one thing. There's nothing wrong with any of these dogs. These are really great dogs. But they all have one or two common threads that make them for not first-time owners. Go. Well, adding on that is, you know, first-time owners, once you get a dog, one dog, but to me, these dogs here doing the dog of injustice if you don't adapt to these dogs and socialize, 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 and all what we have to do to train these dogs. They take more time, they're very active, and they all have their own intelligent dogs, so that the dog, the amazing dogs all. Right. But as the owner needs to understand that if you're gonna commit to a dog like this, you need to follow through with it. It's not it's not a lab dog, it's not a dog that lays around these crackers all day. It's, it's actually a dog that needs work, they all need work, they all are active. So, you know, just keep that in mind when we're talking about these dogs. So, our first dog is the ever-loving Dalmatian. Oh, uh, Walt Disney loves it. Yes. I love Dalmatians. Yes. So the ori yeah, origin of this breed can be traced back to present-day Croatia and the historic region of Dalmatia. Mm -hmm. okay. These dogs, hang on. They can my stuff here because I got so much information I can memorize it all the first time around. Oh, that serious research. I can. So these dogs here basically have a high level of intelligence, near perfect memory, and higher they have high energy. And they need an active lifestyle. Like most of the other breeds we have in here tonight, the dog is not worked or played with or activities, they'll tear up your house and they'll tear up your backyard. Out of sheer boredom alone. Yeah. yeah. So, and on, on the Dalmatian, and you're going to see a common thread with this, with, as Scott goes through the, the scientific stuff about the high energy. I think that's the problem more than, I don't think dogs are ever mean or anything else. They're a product of how you raise them. But uh, I got a little, we got a little trivia question. Someone can throw us an answer by the end of the, the podcast. We'll throw in one of our talk it, get bit t shirts with the uh, K9 Pro Sports shirts. So everyone, what's the job of a, of a Dalmatian, Scott? What's the term they use? What do they call it? They're what kind of dog? Carriage dogs. Carriage dogs. And you'll see that everywhere. And they'll say, they rode along in the carriage, and they protected the carriage when the royal people went into it. That's only part of it. Here's the question. What is the complete job of a carriage dog? in ancient Croatia. First one to come through with the answer tonight gets teacher. T-shirt. Dog number two. Dog number two, the Presa Canaria. Ah. Presa Canaria is a Spanish breed of large
large dog or mastiff. You know? And it originates from the autonomous region of the Canary Islands. Yeah. Okay. Now, the Crystal Canario, the temperament of the dog breed, is working with, it's, it's a working dog, it's instincts. It's naturally dominant with the potential to assertive aggression. And it was originally used to attack wild dogs to protect livestock back in back in ancient Spain. Did you know that? These dogs need early training and socialization with an experienced handler. They are docile, they are docile towards your family, especially the master, but you don't want to leave them around other dogs or children. Because they have a dominating alpha tendency in them. You know, if you feel if you're a person that's uncomfortable, you know, you can't be uncomfortable and you must demonstrate you are the boss with these dogs. So they're not recommended for you. They're very highly confident dogs, so you have to actually assert yourself and put in the work for them. Sounds good. Yeah. What about uh, what about the doggo Argentina? Look at that one. Look, look at this dangerous specimen we brought just for y'all to see live. And this is tell us about this. Highly energetic. <laughs> dog Always going to get you dog. It's a large, white, muscular breed of dog that was developed in Argentina primarily for the purpose of hunting big game, including wild boar. Dogs are big hunters and also trained for search and rescue. Police assistance, service dogs, guides in the barn, competitive obedience, shitsen, and military work. Dogs are intelligent. Yep. Courageous dogs with strong, natural instincts to protect its home and family. Yep. And they can make a familiarization between family and strangers. Uh, they're great with kids. They don't like males of the same, they don't like males of the same, same, same breed dogs. Gender, right. They don't work together very well. Uh, basically, these dogs here, they're only, I don't call it downfall, but they're, they're not dog aggressive, but they're very territorial. And something, another animal comes in, dog, cat, whatever comes into their territory, they come wrong directly, they kind of get defensive and may lash out. Right. And if you're holding on to a 110, 20 pound dog, you better hang on and it because it's going to go. So, a lot of people, <clears throat> when I, I was first introduced to my first dog, I had you know, four or five of my guard dog company uh, in the mid 90s. and. But back then, people called them pit bulls on steroids because they resemble the pit a lot. In my opinion only, um, this is probably one of the most pound for pound powerful dogs on the planet. They're just extremely muscular and they're athletes. That's all there is. Absolutely. Yeah. What else we got? Yeah, that one here. She's so, that dog here is so big. Look at her. She's protecting us sleeping. <laughs> Now this dog here is the Akita Inu, the Akitas, Japanese dogs. Uh, there's two versions of this dog, the American version, and the Japanese version is the Akita Inu. So, it originated in the snowy mountains, Odate, Akita Prefecture, it's a mountain region in Japan, south to the left side of the uh, Kilimanjaro. Down by the creek where there's noodles at one time. Oh sure. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But these so basically these dogs are almost extinct again in World War II. And the Japanese actually had another breed of dog, a Mikasu, and the Lashurian Akitas. They breed them together, bring back the Akita line because they were bred with Eastern European dogs. Right. And to this day, it's part of American Akitas and Japanese Akitas. So now the Japanese Akitas today have zero genes or anything from the original, from the, from the Eastern, from the Noah, Eastern. So, and you can go, if, if you uh, go research enough, if you look over to them, you'll find the, dog, the, the original purpose of the Akita. And I know everyone, oh, they guarded the emperor. No, that's where American dog breeders told us to make it sound cool, right? The rig, they were fight dog fighters. They used them for fighting. And you can find videos in Afghanistan of dogs who, uh, they are the, what we think of as a modern uh, Akita that they used to fight. Uh, so they definitely were bred. Uh, 
Scott. Troy yes, answered yes. your trivia question already. Oh, that sucker, he would. <laughs> let's hear his, let's okay. hear his answer. He said they were used to clear the roads for the horses, pulling <laughs> the coaches, also to protect the firehouses. <laughs> well, you, know, you got you got the hoodie and now you got the t-shirt buddy. <laughs> he said he would just answer the question without the prize but we'll you'll still get the prize troy <laughs> yeah 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 i should have known yeah that's what they did they, because in these little villages you would have uh, everybody would have like a communal herd of sheep and pigs and they'd be on the roads and of course if you're a rich royal person or a military guy you got important things to do so the the Dalmatians were trained to take position by high to get the underneath the carriage beside one wheel, and they would run with the horses and they'd run their position. And then when the carriage got to a jam, a traffic jam, their, their traffic jams were not as bad as our traffic jams, but they smelled a whole lot worse. Damn. So when they got there, the, that, when the carriage stopped, the Dalmatians would come out. And the, the driver would sick them on the on the livestock to clear the roads. So Dan, you Dan, you got a flat and block them over three hours. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go to the next. Thank you, Troy. God, I said I you do that. He said he watches a lot of documentaries. I can believe he does. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I knew something. No, back to the Kitas. The Kitas are strong, independent dogs, and they require experience handling with them. Right. Because they're very independent and they're big dogs too. Yeah. Yeah. So. And you're going to see a common theme through all these dogs that we're talking about that are not the growers in the independence and the energy of them. So. What do you think about Jack Russell's there, Mr. Jack Shane? Russell Terriers. Yeah. So that should be a fox hunting dog in England for one thing. Yeah. I had one of those dogs once. Remember that dog? God was I'd always end up going to get him. Nate was in school, and I'd always end up going to the school. Your dog's back to school. Oh, Seek oh. out the fence and go to the that, that, that was a beagle. Was that a beagle? Oh, that was a beagle. Oh, that's what it was. That's Jack. What do you have to mean? Scott's had more beers than his wife here on our technician. Is. I can't remember that far back. <laughs> but the working guy. Uh, okay. <laughs> Jack Russell is a first and foremost working carrier. High energy, high energy drive. They're good for a lot of things. You know, they're stubborn, aggressive sometimes with other dogs. And they need, if you got a dog like this, you need to spend the time and the necessary amount of <laughs> activities. They have, they have energy for its size, and it's like they're an energizer bunny. They don't stop. They do not stop. I like to say this about the Jack Russell Terrier. People are not as familiar with small dogs, but are familiar with larger dogs, working dogs, as we love to say. The Jack Russell Terrier is the dog the Malinois always wanted to be. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> because as much as you, and we'll discuss Malinois probably before this is over, I don't know if it's but as much as you hear about Malinois being, you know, energetic, hard to live with, this and the other, nah, they <laughs> Mal can't hold a candle with Jack Russell. Mm -hmm. They are a handful. They are so intelligent and so capable of doing so much. But again, we have this common thread. Think about it, folks. Every dog we said is difficult for first-time owners. High energy. Intelligence. Intelligence. <laughs> Speaking of intelligence. Well, that, our next dog we're going to talk about here is... Pretty smart little crack. The dog intention. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. A little bias going here. Not really. Not really. <laughs> you know, he was, you know, Carl Frederick Lewis created his dog back in 1890. He's a tax collector. And, uh, you know, he also had to use a, in charge of the dog pound. Along with a uh, tax collector. So he was a pretty much part, rough part of town. So he decided to make himself a dog. Pretty thing when he's collecting taxes. Hence, the pigeon. Uh, no one really knows what's in the breed. Dog, there's a speculation on what dogs are in this breed. And we could sit there all day long over a game of cribbage and talk about it, but we don't have time for that. So, these dogs are highly intelligent. They've been rated on um, these multiple tests as one of the, the smartest dogs that, of the breeds. You know, along with the German 
Shepherd Shepherds, the Border Collies, border collies border Poodles, collies, Standard Poodles, and uh, they actually have traits where they have personalities, you know, very much, yeah. But they, like, again, very, very active, and you really have to put the work into these dogs, or they will tear up your house. Yeah. And Scott's got a Doberman, and he can vouch for the number of times he's played his house. Still replacing stuff. Yeah, he's no, not anymore. <laughs> he's almost three now, so we're, we're getting through it. That's how we met, actually. It is. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do we got next? Okay. This one here, uh, I've seen a few of these, these big dogs. The Rhodesian Ridgeback from South Africa. And they were drafted by F. R. Barnes and Bulawayo, South Rhodesia. Now it's been bought way now. Henceforth, the name the Rhodesian Ridgeback. I always keep changing, you know. Countries down there. Yeah. You know, African lion dog. Everybody yeah. used to hunt lions. And they also are loyal and intelligent. Is someone aloof of strangers? No, aloof and aggressive two different things. Very much. So, you know. And, and, and you know, one thing I'd say about Rhodesian is this. If you think about it, the list we've done so far, we've done Mastiffs, we've done Herding Dogs, we've done Terriers, we haven't mentioned any hunting dogs. Um, I've, I've had the, the extreme pleasure of working with probably a half dozen Rhodesians. They are, they're a hunting dog. Anyone who's getting one of the hunting breeds, you know, you really need to have a little experience where you make a short hair pointer one of those dogs, your, your, your family member. The Rhodesians are one of the hunting breeds that I find to be most likely to be territorial and protected in the home. But as a recent customer who gave me the idea for this topic, uh, told me last week, boy, he's a handful. They, they are, they're hunting dogs. They're looking for something to do, by guys. Yeah. You know, and they don't need you along with them to do it. So, you know, like. I got a question. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I mean, I've been thinking about this, males and females. Is there differences? Are there these dogs here, or? In, I mean, in, we're talking about. I mean, gender differences? Gender differences. Yep, yep, and I'll, one of the other breeds we're going to have. Yes, ma'am. Um, Molly Jones said she came in at the Akita. What breeds were before that? Can you what, what let her doing? know before? This dog here is a very popular dog in America. Obviously, it's the American Bulldog. There you go. Now you're talking my kind of dog. American Bulldogs, you know, there is actually no, as with a dog, it's, the dog came over and ended up that in the south down here, like in Texas, they had uh, feral hog problems. So they started breeding these dogs, different strains of these bulldogs. And uh, by, was it, 19, by 1960, they had the, 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 the two different strains, there's two different strains they were using. There's one strain that is an original American bulldog, and then there's a premier, which is a totally different bulldog. Same dog, but just different in the south. They were hunting feral pigs and varmints, and that's what their primary use was. And they almost went extinct in 1960. And uh, gentleman, I can't remember his name. J.D. Johnson. J.D. Johnson went ahead and came back and restarted uh, breeding these dogs. And they're one of the most popular dogs in America. Uh, what's that, that dog show? Disney had two of them in that. Uh, Guys, it says no video, but it still shows your live. Wow. My screen is black. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I know what's happening. It's probably because of the wind. Came in at Akita and then said, no, anybody lose video? No video, but it still shows us live. Can you hear us? That was weird. Troy. Audio was good. Thanks, Troy. That's weird. Well, we got troubles, folks. Yep. This always happens. Yeah, it does. Uh, yeah. Buffered and went back. Um, let's see. It's still not showing anything on my phone. Buffered and went back. Audio good. Don't know why I don't have anything. 
No video. No video. No video. I don't know what's going on. Has been. It has been buffering, so we're not getting a good connection. Okay. Okay. He says it's the wind. Yeah. I was correct. John was just, yes, you were. <laughs> well, we can still play, guys, if you just want to listen to audio. Yeah, we can. Yes. You can go in. We'll, go, we'll continue with the audio if anyone uh, wants to hear the rest of the stuff and it's like a regular podcast on your, your radio. Sue. So, no, Scott, that don't mean you can get naked. You got to keep. English Bulldogs were brought over here. They were, when bull, bull baiting was, I shouldn't go to the story, but when bull baiting was outlawed in England, you know, if their dog wasn't making it, you know, it's keep, he didn't keep you. So without bull baiting to make money for these dogs, English Bulldogs, they were just roaming the countryside. And one of the things that when they sent the colonizers over here to the States, they knew they had wild animals to take care of, so they sent a lot of English Bulldogs with them. But as they got popular, they became, they bred them down to make them a lap dog. But in the South, we still had dogs that had been bred for centuries, two centuries, from the original Bulldogs. And a fellow named J.D. Johnson refined them. Uh, you still have two strains, Scott and Johnson dogs. Uh, they are, in my opinion, one of the best all-around dogs in the world. But they are impervious to pain. They're great, believe it or not, for kids, because you can have a kid take a, take a finger in his eye, a bulldog will just kind of blink at him. But high energy and very powerful, I think, after the dog, or maybe as powerful as the dog. Though. So if you get one, you will love them. Their personalities are clowns or what they And I read up that they said them dogs are slow matures. They don't mature for about two and a half. Yeah. Slow yeah. matures. Like so you get, bigger dogs. you got a 110 pound puppy, right? <laughs> and a, a, a bowl of title cabinet. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. What else we got? We have the Butcher Dog of the Rottweilers. Uh, speaking of Virginia. Yeah. The Rottweilers. Okay. You know, they call the Butcher Dogs of the Rottweilers because their main use was to herd livestock and pull carts laden with butchered meat to the market. They were, they were, drop, they were drag dogs for the butcher. Yeah. yeah. Because there weren't no trains or nothing else. And once the trains started coming through, well, that all changed, but, right. you know. And, and when we're talking about gender, it's never more distinct than in this case. I hear a lot of people say, well, like, related with the Rhodesian Ridgeback, mm -hmm. you know, well, my brother-in-law had a Rhodesian and she was so sweet, so we really caution every potential Rottweiler on her. The difference between a female Rottweiler and a male Rottweiler, it's almost like two different breeds. If you are not an experienced dog owner, do not get the Rottweiler. Because the Rottweilers, males especially, personality is real simple. They don't ever work for you. Mm -hmm. They will work with you, so you better not know enough to know how to work with them. Because a Rottweiler will correct you if you do something wrong, and they have very sharp teeth for that correction. The females, however, are the best babysitters on the planet. So female Rotties, Great for any first time owner. Rot, male rots, stay away from them. What do you got, Carolyn? Molly Jones says Zeus heard your voice and is trying to lick the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fighting him off. <laughs> Thank you. That's one of our Western Shepherds. I guess they know me, dude. So we got one more. Uh, I wonder what that might be. Le Chien de Belgier Belge. What? Le Chien de Belgier Belge. Are you trying to say it's all about our national policy? So let's cut it short here. The Belgian Shepherd. So basically, Belgian Shepherd. <laughs> right? So it's actually one breed of dog broken down into four different styles of dog. Okay? So you've got your. 
you got your growing out. What's growing out? Grenadale, a turbine, a lacking wall. Lacking wall. A lacking wall. And everybody's, the dog is coming up now. The Belgian male. Malinois. Malinois. Malinois E. Malinois E. Yep, yep. So, so, one fun fact about this this is all the same a dog breed, but they were all in different regions of Belgium. That's why the, like the, the Mal short hair for where he was, you know, the Turban and stuff, they're all different. Mm -hmm. That's why it's actually the same dog, except for some of the characteristics in the Gronendale is a little more mellow than the Mal and the Turban. Mm -hmm. So, which you want to go ahead? Yeah, I got, I, to give everybody a really clear understanding of what it's like to raise a Mal, I'm going to tell you a story. This is a little lengthy. I see we're running over time, but I'm going to go with it anyway. When I, when I left my guard dog company, I had to find homes for the dogs to be, you know, in civilization. And I had a little drug dog named Annie. Annie was a French ring dog that, like brokers do, they bring, they bring trained dogs over and then they'll retrain them for maybe a police department or a police department will retrain them. So they, Annie, Annie had been trained down at a, a sheriff's department in the Houston area. She's a drug dog, but she'd done French ring. One of the, one of the exercises that you do in French ring, males are obsessive and compulsive, and once they get something in their mind, that's the only thing that exists, right? Mm -hmm. Plus they're high energy. Like I said, they want to be a Jack Russell, but they're just not quite that energetic. So one of the exercises in French ring is the guard the OJ, they call it. That's where now they use a basket they put in front of the dog, put the dog in down, and the guy makes like he's gonna go take it from him, and the dog can't move until he actually like grabs the basket. I'm being real general in this kind. And the dogs are taught to protect the basket, protect the basket. When we had when I would clean up around the house, my, my yard, I would let Annie out sometimes. <laughs> And I'd go around scooping poop, and I'd fill up a little bag, and I'd leave it in one place, and I'd get another bag, and we had two acres. We'd have bags everywhere. And Annie, the Malinois, the French ring Malinois, who hadn't been in a French ring competition for at least three or four years, because I don't know that long, would go to one of these bags, lay down behind it, <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, I ain't kidding you. And if Denise, my wife, walked out, she better not get near that bag, because I was a hammer. I could do it. Stephanie, the, the daughter, walks out. If, you, if they got near those bags, Annie would come alive and bite their butts. That obsessive. So if you think you want that kind of dog, let me tell you how Annie ended up. We remember she's a drug detection dog, but she was great. She never she never missed. When she said it was there, it was there. She was a, what we call an active indicator back in those days. You wanted the dog to go scratch right at the spot. You know, now we do passive indications, mostly, so you don't take the paint off somebody's car. Um, but Annie was great. And when I sold, I was looking around for somebody. There were some people that I knew. They had a little, they were at a family business store. And I used to go to their store a lot, and we got to be good friends. And the, the bigger, older brother was looking for a dog. And so I said, hey, you know, I've got this really great little Malinois, and she knows all her training, and she'd be, you know, you'd love her. So he said, well, let me try her. Yeah, I'll take her. So he takes Annie. And for two or three weeks, you know, he, because they had like three stores, and he'd go around to all the stores. And I'd see him. And he'd say, oh, I love her. She, she's so smart. She does everything. She, when I say it, she does it. She's so quick. I just wonder. She's great. And then I walked in the store one day, and my little brother was at the store. And he said, oh, if my big brother sees you, he's going to kick your butt. And I said, yeah, what the, what do you mean? What? What's going on? He said, that dog. Was that a drug dog? I said, well, yeah, she was a drug dog. Well, you didn't tell us that. I said, well, why should I? <laughs> you know, hey. And he said, well, so here's the story. These two brothers, you know, they smoke a little marijuana, but they, they got a business, they got a store, so, and they were tight with the dollar bill. So 
they don't buy, you know, what I don't know, buy a, a pound or whatever marijuana or five joints. They went straight to the drug dealers and would buy like bricks. I think they were 2.2 something kilos of brick, if I remember correctly. Oh boy. And old brother went to work and, and one day he didn't close his bedroom door. And when he came home, he smelled the smell of the aroma of marijuana the minute he opened the door. His whole house smelled like a joint. <laughs> And he goes and he finds Annie in his bedroom. She has literally scratched a hole in his door, bedroom door, that he normally would always leave closed when she was in there. He had scratched a hole through the door, crawled through, found the closet door, scratched a hole through that, started grabbing these two pound bricks of grass and throwing them in the air and having so much They're fun. Blown up. Yes, it's all there. They're all shit flying everywhere. There's, uh, yeah, there's shit <laughs> flying everywhere. <laughs> Get the tape. And oh my. Yeah, yeah. His his whole bedroom is covered with you know wow. tobacco, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. And um, and Annie just was so proud of herself. Look what I did, Dad. Look what I did. So so if you get them out, you must, as we've said through this whole thing. Active dogs need something to do, early socializing, lots of training, give them a job, or you allow them to be losing something of great value when they grow up. So, sorry we lost our audio, I mean our video. Hope, uh, hope, hope the stories were good enough to stick around for them, right? What else you got, Scott? Well, in closing, you know, talk about temperament, temperament, temperament. Please. Temperament, well, you know, excuse me. Temperament. Keep in mind, temperament is less predictable than the hairy physical traits. So, the size of a dog, it's how it sheds its hair, it's built, right? Temperament and behavior are also shaped by raising and training the dogs from puppy. So, you have as much to do on how that dog acts as that dog has to do on its own. Very so, good. With all these breeds here, you get started early, and you put your effort in, and you give with that dog, and it becomes a part of you, and you guys have a great dog. Yeah, yeah. It's all on you folks. You ask for them, you got them. They'll be, they'll be uh, uh, her, her, one, one person told me years ago, everybody who gets a dog, gets a puppy, ends up with the dog they deserve. There you go. <laughs> True statement. So. All right, man. We're done. We're done. We'll see y'all next see week. See next week, hopefully with video. Hopefully we'll see you. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we'll see Troy said thanks, great story. We got to get that, can't we? Oh, all right, so we need to look at the...